Hello again folks and this is another screencast on biomechanics and this time we are looking at the second aspect of angular motion which is revolving around moment of inertia. If you remember from the last screencast angular motion one we took a look at the different angular motion descriptors and so the first four boxes you can see on the screen are in angular motion one screencast as they are fairly basic and they just require simple calculations or definitions. What we're going to take a look at in this particular screencast is something called the moment of inertia and in the following screencast we will look at angular momentum. In the exam you are permitted to write MI instead of moment of inertia as they will take that as credit for this particular definition. However you will need a sentence to define moment of inertia and quite possibly the equation that I'm going to place on this screen. The moment of inertia is how resistant a body, so remember an object or a person, is to changing its state of angular motion or rotation. So how easy is it to rotate that object or the body? In that sense, angular uh, motion in the form of moment of inertia is the equivalent of inertia in terms of Newton's laws you know it, the the body will remain at rest until a force is acted upon it and the moment of inertia means how resistant is that body to being moved from that moment of inertia the way to calculate moment of inertia is quite complex compared to the other calculations so please make a note of the definitions there I've tried to color in the different aspects to help match the final equation which is classified as that that is on the screen underneath below. Remember the blue squiggly line if you're not competent with maths means sum of um, and of course in the final calculation underneath there in brackets I've also put what each different element is measured in so do make a note of this correctly. Okay, so let's look at some examples of what we're talking about in terms of resisting rotation. So we have two pictures here on the screen, both of a diver doing different elements of a dive. So picture A, you can see the diver's tucked his knees in, he's made himself very compact, and what we can say there is he has a low moment of inertia, which means it's very easy for that diver to rotate in that position compared to picture B, whereas the diver has extended his body and if he wanted to rotate in that position, it would be very difficult. So we say picture B has a high MI or high moment of inertia. So to recap there, A has a low MI, low moment of inertia, it is easier to rotate and picture B has a high moment of inertia, high MI. When we're looking at what actually affects how easy a body rotates, you're talking about two specific factors. First of all, the weight of the body you are describing. So we'll come to this in a second. And the second factor we look at is how far away is the mass, the distribution of mass, from the axis it is rotating around. So again, that factor is the distribution of mass from the axis of rotation. So let's look at the mass factor. The heavier the object, the greater it is to resist motion, particularly angular motion. So that means the MI of a heavy object is probably going to be quite high. And logically, low weight or low mass kilograms decreases the MI and therefore rotation is easier. So if you think logically about things you might see in sport, so let's take a gymnast on the beam. A gymnast might try to have low body weight because that will mean their MI is reduced, so their MI will be low and therefore they can rotate and perform somersaults, cartwheels, arabesque, springs on the beam 
very, very easily because it's far easier to rotate. It's going to take less force in terms of eccentric force to push that body around. So the lower mass of the gymnast will give you easier rotations. However, if we take something like sumo wrestling, for example, the heavier mass will mean if I really wanted to rotate the sumo wrestler in any way, it will be very difficult. So the sumo wrestler would have a high MI because they have a much heavier mass. So the second factor looked at where the mass is from the axis of rotation that you're spinning around. Logically, the further the mass is away from the point that you spin it, the axis of rotation, the higher the MI will be. And therefore, the closer you move the mass towards the axis of rotation will reduce the moment of inertia and therefore rotation can be quicker. So again, if we look at something like diving, if we wanted to rotate around the transverse axis, which is split from left to right across the body, if you look at those two divers, because they have stretched out their legs, stretched out their arms, their head is even stretched in a long position, the weight between the axis or the distance of the weight from the axis is quite large and so therefore to rotate in that position is very difficult and that would mean in that position there is a high MI because the weight is more distant from the axis. However if you look at something like an ice skater who bends their body in half to get closer to the axis of rotation so they have closed, or they, they've contracted the rectus abdominis, they've brought the, the rectus femoris straight to keep their transverse axis very close to where they want to spin around in terms of the mass. That will decrease the mass and the axis and therefore they would have a low MI and therefore they can spin faster. So closer mass distribution reduces MI, gives you a low MI, and that means rotation can be easier. Now, what we do say is that there is a re distinct relationship between the moment of inertia, MI, and angular velocity. So how fast, how, how speedy is the rotation that we are moving in? And these two are intertwined. MI has a direct effect on angular velocity because if the moment of inertia is high, so you've got a very heavy individual or very heavy object, that means the amount it spins in rotation is going to be low. So angular velocity becomes low. So MI high means angular velocity is low. And therefore, the reverse is also true. So if the moment of inertia is low, so take that gymnast, very low body weight, so we can spin her easy. Therefore, when she does spin, angular velocity is going to be high. She's going to spin fast. The speed of that spin is going to be quick. And therefore, there is a direct relationship between MI and angular velocity. And that is required thinking in terms of exam answers. Thanks again for watching this screencast and if you need any more help with biomechanics or any other aspect of OCRPE please head to the iSpeakPE channel on YouTube.